Okay, so welcome back everyone. So uh, let's start the second half of uh, Eli Casby's talk on uh, representations of affine groups and equivalent homology of affine Grassmannians. Please take it away, Eli. Thank you. Thank you so much. So yeah, now I'm going to ex I'm going to um, explain what this categorification is, and um, yeah, so we are going to provide a in natural interpretation of D bar in terms of this categorification, and we will see how this uh, allows us to answer questions one and two. All right, so. Um, so quantum affine algebras or affine quantum groups, so you can view them in two ways. So it's this UQ of G hats. So the first way you can view it is you, you take an affine deformation of G hat, so a loop deformation of G hat, and then you take the quantized universal enveloping algebra of this. Or alternatively, you take the quantum group UQG, so quantized universal enveloping algebra of G, and you can have a loop version of this. And it's a famous uh, theorem by Drinfeld that these two things are actually the same. So anyways, we don't need this for us. It's just, it's just for us, it's just gonna be some algebra, which is a Hopf algebra. And because it's a Hopf algebra, it's category of finite dimensional reps is monoidal. So if I take V and W, V tensor W is not only a UQG hat tensor UQG hat module, it's actually a UQG hat module. Because, yeah, because I have this co-product co here. So yeah, for us, so it's like a monoidal category uh, of finite dimensional reps of this guy. It's a very huge uh, category, infinitely many simple objects. It's not semi-simple, so it's complicated category. But at least it has something nice. There is a notion of character. So that means there is an injective ring homomorphism from the Grotnik group of C. So Grotnik ring of C, because it's monoidal category. So actually, it's a ring. So from the K0 of C to some torus. So basically, for each object in C, you can write down a Laurent polynomial in a bunch of variables, which records the dimensions of weight subspaces. So every any representation, finite dimensional representation of this guy has a, a little bit like this L of lambda that we saw earlier. It's just more general, more yeah, uh, high tech. So th there is also a notion of weight subspaces and you record the dimension of these weight subspaces into some Laurent polynomial. So that's really what this guy does. So this is due to Frankel and Reschetikin at the end of the 90s. Um, and yeah, so as I said, there, there is an, a monstrous quantity of simple objects in this, uh, in this category. So there are as many, up to isomorphism, as many simple objects as monomials in these generators. So really monomials, not low monomials, yes? Uh, and so for example, you can take a monomial with only one guy, one variable. So this is what we call fundamental representation. And somehow they generate this category C, okay? But of course you can consider more complicated monomials. So it's really like an analog of highest weight, yes? So these Y, I, A's are analogs of the omega I in classical Lie theory. So analog of dominant weights It's just now you, for each i in one comma n, instead of having just omega i, you have as many weights as non-zero complex number. So it's really something massive. But you should think of this as omega i twisted by some complex numbers, roughly speaking. Okay, and this classification result is due to Shari and, and Presley. So yeah, so for us, we have a nice, uh, so we have a monoidal category, it's Grotten group, it's just a nice ring. And we have, uh, so it's called Q character, but everything is commutative here, okay? This is purely a billion setting. This is a commutative ring. This is a nice Laurent polynomial ring, okay. 
So what Hernandez and Leclerc did, they looked at some kind of discrete skeleton of this category. So some kind of Z version, some kind of integer version of this. So uh, now instead of looking at any non-zero complex numbers here, we are going only to look at integer powers of the indeterminate Q. So we recall that for me, G is simply laced. So I can choose an orientation of its dinking diagram, so-called dinking quiver. And I can, I am going, we are going to look at the subcategory of C generated by these fundamental reps. So we choose a certain collection of monomials in the Y. So if you want, we, we choose only the YIA such that A is a power, an integer power. Of, so it's Q to the P where P is like this. Okay, so we look only at the simple modules whose label is uh, involves this y i q to the p. Okay, so this is what we call C Z. So it's really the same as C, but in the discrete version. And then we have some kind of truncated version of C, uh, which depends on the choice of height function, where basically we take we take like one half, if that makes sense. So we take only, if you want, roughly speaking, yeah, only uh, negative P, so whatever. Yeah, only like one half of, of CC. Okay, both of them are monoidal subcategories. Um, and so what they proved in, uh, yeah, in 2015, 2016, what they proved is that our coordinate ring here, C of N, is isomorphic to the Grothendieck ring, so extended scalars to complex numbers, is isomorphic to the Grothendieck ring of a certain special monoidal subcategory inside CZ or inside C lower xi. So we have a nice monoidal subcategory, so I which depends on our initial choice of Q here. So if you change your Q, you get a different subcategory of CZ, but in the end, the Grothendieck ring will be the same. Um, so yeah, so once we fix a Q, we have a nice, so Q tells us uh, which fundamental reps we should choose, finitely many of them. And this CQ, so now the CQ is going to be a small category that we can handle a bit better. And its Grothendieck ring is isomorphic to C of N. And moreover, uh, this isomorphism maps bijet bijectively the dual canonical basis constructed by Lustig and Kashiwara to the classes of simple objects in CQ. Okay. Uh, so the dual canonical basis is not the same as the mirkovich vilanen basis that we saw earlier. It's two different bases, but they have a significant overlap. Um, so yeah, so here it's dual canonical basis mapping to classes of simple objects. But what's good for, so in particular, what we'll be using in our construction is that, so we have this isomorphism and this category is a subcategory of CZ. So we have an, an obvious inclusion here. And then we have this Q character morphism due to Frankel and Reschetik. So that means now that we have a way so this representation theory of affine quantum groups, we can take it as a black box that tells us that for each regular to each regular function on N, we can associate a nice Laurent polynomial in whatever bunch of variables. And this is what we'll be using. Um, yeah, so concretely, um, do I have an example? Yes, I do have an example, fantastic. So. Um, my running example was SL3, so I'm choosing this orientation, okay? So in this specific example, the category CQ is generated by three fundamental representations. So this one, this one, this one, okay? And uh, um, so believe me that there is a short exact sequence, I mean, there are many more of course short exact sequences, but let's look at this nice short exact sequence in CQ. So if you tensor these two guys together, so these guys are simple, 
Okay, they are both irreducible representations, but if you tensor them together, it's not simple anymore. So it's kind of big question in this area to know when is it true that the tensor of two simples is still simple. Okay, I'm not gonna go into that. In this example, the tensor of these two simples is not simple. So it has a submodule, which is actually this guy, and the quotient of this map is a simple is is also simple. It's not a fundamental, but it's still simple. Okay, it's a monomial with two two guys. So this guy is not simple, but it's of length two. In other words, okay, so it it has a irreducible submodule and irreducible head, irreducible quotient. Yes. So we have a nice short exact sequence in this uh, in this category. So in the Grot in the Grotnik ring. Having a short exact sequence means that the class of this is the sum of the class of this and the class of that. And because it's a ring, so the class of this is the product of these classes. So the product of the classes of these guys, the product of these two classes, is equal to the sum of these two classes. So maybe that slightly rings a bell uh, from the beginning of the talk. So uh, this is really the x, x prime equals y plus z of slide number one or number two, right? So Hernandez Leclerc isomorphism in this example maps this guy to x, this guy to y, this guy to x, uh, sorry, my, my bad. This guy to x, this guy to x prime, this guy to y, and this guy to z, yes. Right, so this xx prime equals, so we started with xx prime equals y plus z, which when you look at minors and matrices is completely trivial. We have a first level of interpretation, which is, well, it's a mutation from the cluster structure of CA. And this is another level, which is the categorified level where we say, well, this mutation sequence, this identity in the Grotnik ring comes from a short exact sequence in this category. Okay. Um, yes. So uh, what we are going to do is um, we're going to, so now we have regular functions in CN such that X or Y or Z or X prime. And now we know that they correspond to classes of modules in the CQ. And these modules in the CQ, they have a Q character. So I can map them to get nice Laurent polynomials. So this is what we're going to do now. So Frankel-Rechitikin defined so this Q character morphism. And Hernandez Leclerc, for reasons related to cluster theory that I will not tell, they had to truncate it. So they used what they call truncated Q character. So basically, if you have a module in CQ, or more generally in this half of CZ, well, you look at its Q character, so you get a Laurent polynomial, but then maybe this Laurent polynomial involves uh, variables that are that are in the other half, in the half we are not considering the upper, in the in the other half of CZ. So you just killed it. So um, it's still a morphism. It's still injective. And uh, yeah, this is the reasons related to cluster theory. This is, OK, I will not go into, into, into much detail. OK, so you take the Q character of some guy in CQ, and you kill the terms that live in the, the half we do, in the other half of the category. So for example, um, if you look at this representation, we, this representation which, co which corresponds to x, um, it's q character. It's uh, as a vector space, it's of dimension three. Its q character has three terms, and the truncated q character kills these two guys and keeps only this one. And similarly for this one, which corresponds to y, q character the truncated the truncation kills these two terms. 
This guy is more complicated. So the truncation also kills everyone but the dominant, the leading term. And it's in that case, which corresponds to x prime, the truncation kills only the last term. And these two guys survive. OK. Any questions on this categorification business? So if not, I can state uh, well, yeah. I can state our results, uh, our constructions and results. So um, unfortunately, I need a little one more piece of notation. So it's something called uh, quantum carton matrices. So we are in simply laced type. So you have the carton matrix of G. So two on the diagonal and a bunch of minus one outside of the diagonal. So you take this, the very same matrix, but instead of two on the diagonal, you replace your twos by quantum two. So Z plus Z inverse, where Z is a form of variable. And this matrix is invertible. So you look at its inverse, you get a beautiful matrix. And the entry of this matrix are, uh, so are, yeah, are functions of Z of this formal variable that you can expand into a formal series. And the integer, and this is what we want to extract as information. So this is a family of integers. So the coefficients of power series expansions of these functions obtained in this way, inverting the quantum carton matrix. So these integers have nice properties. You have some periodicity property. You have nice recursion relations. So very nice, nice properties. They, they are very nice, very nice guys. So um, what we did with uh, my collaborator, Sian um, we the, our construction goes as follows. So we construct a map from this torus. So this torus contains all the, it's really this torus. So it contains all the truncated Q characters of uh, whatever objects in C, Q or whatever. So this is the torus, the torus containing truncated Q characters. And we're going to map it into our field of rational functions. So for each generator of this torus, we associate a certain rational function, which involves here these uh, coefficients of the inverse quantum carton matrix of G. And this is, uh, so it's, it's really a positive root or a negative root. It's a root, a root viewed as a linear function on T, on, yeah, like viewed as a, a an element of T star. Um, uh, so uh, the dual of the Cartan. So, so how, so this root is, is uh, specified, is, is prescribed by some classical Auslander Haydn theory. So I will not go into details, but there is some nice combinatorics. So if you like representations of finite algebra, finite dimensional algebras, this is a big deal. So you have a whole theory that tells you uh, how to associate in a natural way um, a, a, a root to each of these tuples, y, p, or j, s. Okay, so I'm not going into details. The only thing that matters is that to each generator of this torus, we can have an explicit rational function de defined in this way. Okay, so now this is a nice morphism. Okay. And our result goes as follows. So um, here we recall we have this Categori categorification isomorphism due to Hernandez and Leclerc. So our coordinate ring CN is isomorphic to the Grothendieck ring of this little subcategory CQ. And the truncated Q character morphism allows you to associate the Laurent polynomial to each of the guys here. Okay, so you have this composed map. And if you plug in, so if you take a rational function in CN, you look at the Laurent polynomial given to you by this 
affine quantum groups representation categorification business. And you plug in this Laurent polynomial into our map D tilde, into this map. Then what you get is exactly D bar, the same rational function, that it, like it's the same map. So it's really the, the map defined by Bowman Kamitzel. Um, and so using this, we can, we can prove, so the conjecture I mentioned that for these specific cluster variables called, called flag miners, the D bar is one over blah, blah. It becomes, yeah, it becomes clear when, when you go through this. Okay. Okay. I still have a little bit of time. Um, so, so this is. Yeah, what we the public this was published last year, and uh, I can mention what we are uh, doing at the moment. So an ongoing ongoing project. So here we are using Hernandez Leclerc truncated version of the Q character morphism. But the natural question is, after all, after all, uh, we can decide that we don't want. We can yeah, we can. It's a very natural question to ask. What happens if we don't truncate? Okay, so this upper side of the picture is is the yeah the previous slide, but now we can also say well I don't want to truncate, so I really take Frankel Reschetikin Q character, so I get more complicated Laurent polynomials now. But I can still plug them in into D tilde because for some reason D tilde lives on the whole torus. Okay, so I don't need to truncate to apply this. I can plug in whatever I want to this. So what happens? What happens if instead of plugging in truncated Q characters, I plug in the whole Q character? And the answer is you get zero. So this is what we are uh, proving at the moment. So if you, if you take a fundamental representation, you take its whole Q character, the D tilde of this is zero. And if you take an arbitrary object, it's, it's going to be a constant. Maybe not zero, but at least a constant. But it doesn't really matter. It's fundamental reps are sufficient because they generate our category. So in other words, uh, a purely, if you want, technical way to view this would be that from this representation theory of affine quantum groups, you can get nice complicated Laurent polynomials. And each term, which give, will, will give you a rational function when you plug it into the detail down. So this tells you that you have a very complicated sum of rational function functions that somehow magically simplify and you end up with zero. Okay, so uh, this is, so I still have, a, I think I have, a, couple of minutes left yes do i have uh how much yeah, yeah that's good yeah okay good fantastic so now we can maybe go beyond this purely technical approach and ask what can what kind of interpretation how how can we understand this this uh, statement and um so what i have in mind is some geometric interpretation um yeah so um classical so classical fact that i didn't mention earlier when i talked of in i mean i maybe slightly mentioned when i talked of equivalent homology so again very classical fact going back to atiabot berlin Bern. so if you have yeah under a mild te technical assumption you have this famous integration formula so if you take an homology class oh there is a t missing here i'm sorry um, so if you take a class in the equivariant homology space of X, and you integrate it over X, then this is the same as the sum over the fixed points of, so here it's the, the pullback map to this point, and this is the inverse of the Euler class in equivariant Euler class at P. And uh, if X is compact, then this sum is going to be zero. Um, yeah, X is compact of, of dimensions strictly positive then the integral of the fundamental class is zero. And uh, this is the interpretation I have in mind. 
so it's somehow uh, speculative at the moment, to be very honest. But this is, uh, yeah. So the interpretation that we have in mind is the following. So for each representation in CQ, there should be um, an algebraic variety, a, a compact algebraic variety XM endowed with natural action of the maximal torus of G, such that the fixed points of XM, the T fixed points of XM should correspond somehow to the terms of the Q character of M, so to the weight subspaces basis of M. And uh, what happens, what's going on when we plug in every term into D tilde, every term of the Q character into D tilde, it somehow must correspond to the inverse equivalent Euler class at P. And then because this variety is compact, then when you plug in the whole Q character, well, what you are doing is that you are summing over all fixed points. And because of Atiyabot integration formula, you are that means you are integrating your class over x. And yeah, this class should somehow be constant or from, yeah. And so you get zero. So this is the interpretation we have in mind. So I said it's speculative, at least on my running example, it's not speculative. So this is nice. <laughs> so um, let me present it and then I'll be done. So on my running example, um, yeah, so this is my, this was my X and my X prime and my Y. And so this is the guys we already have. They correspond to, yeah, so I should have called, yeah, sorry about that. This should be X and this should be X prime and this should be Y. And the corresponding MV cycles in that case are, yeah, they are fairly simple. Um, so X is a P1, X prime is a P1, Y is a P2. And the tangent weights, this is a P1 with tangent weights alpha 1. This is tangent weight alpha 2. Of course, they're smooth, obviously. And this has tangent weights alpha 1 and alpha 1. So when I say tangent weights is at the fixed point that Bowman, Kamiser, and Knudson need to consider. And uh, so, yeah, this is typical example. So if I look at this guy, this middle line here, x prime. So as I'm, so the whole Q character of x prime is this. So this is what I get if I plug in d tilde to each term. So as you can check, it's this is zero, yes. Um, and this is exactly what you get if you consider a P2 uh, with these weights. And uh, you get you consider the class alpha 1, alpha 1, alpha 1. So constant class alpha 1 everywhere. And you can check that uh, this is the uh, this is this fixed point alpha one or alpha two alpha one plus alpha two this is this fixed point and this is this fixed point so this is really the right hand side of atiyabot integration formula on a p2 with this so you get zero and now our result of tian hongli with that we obtain with tian hongli that if you plug in the truncated q character you obtain the same as Bowman Kamisa Kinson's map becomes clear on this example because the truncated Q character kills this guy, which corresponds to, to which corresponds to uh, this guy. So the taking the truncated Q character means that you consider only these two fixed points. And the MV cycle is here. Bowman Kamisa Knudsen fixed point is here. And then it's a classical fact of equivariant homology that if you have a map from X to Y, then the equivariant multiplicity here is the sum of the equivariant multiplicities on the fiber. So this would be the geometric interpretation of all this story. And uh, there might be more to say, but I really need to stop now. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for a beautiful talk.